Babe, come here for a minute. Come here for a second, babe. Come here for a second, sweetheart. Come here. Sit down. And you were mine, and I was yours. And we were fine, but I closed doors. Space of time could change it all. And now we find these vacant halls where those pictures used to be. Now we're shattered, broken glass. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Damian Cryer, and I'm back in a freaking building with another video. I hope all of you guys have an amazing, blessed, and awesome Sunday, man. If you have not subscribed to the Crime Family, you already know what to do. Turn that bell on so you're subscribed to the channel. But being subscribed to the channel only means you are subscribed to the channel. You already know you got to have all them bells and all that other stuff on just to get the notification. Whereas over on Facebook, you don't have to do all that. All you got to do is press the follow button every time I drop a video on Facebook. All of you guys who get notification guys also we are back doing daily uploads on all three the crier family the damien crier and the crier family facebook page so guys go on over and follow me on all of my social media also i will be dropping the links to all of my social media in the description box down below guys so y'all know i got that fish fillet sitting in front of me i got two large catfish fillets sitting in front of me you guys have seen me cook catfish before multiple times. Today, I'm gonna be adding a little twist to it. That's the reason why you see that filet knife sitting right here. So, yesterday, this is the second part of yesterday's video with the lasagna, guys. I'm so glad I did not drop the whole video in one segment because mistakes I made, I didn't realize the mistakes I made until I dropped part one of how to make a lasagna with the Cryer family. And a lot of you guys left me a lot of informative information that not even I was aware of. I did not know that some of the items that I have bought was vegan or vegan based uh, products I had bought, like the cheese. I had no idea, guys. There was something else I bought that was uh, plant-based products. I had no idea. This is what happens, man, when you are a solo person and you never did stuff like that. Lasagna was one of the first times I'm making that lasagna. And also another mistake that I made in that video, guys, was the shells I bought. There's an option to buy the shells that's for the oven and you have an option to buy the shells that you have to boil first. I did not buy the oven shells. I ended up buying the ones that you have to boil. But I started boiling a few of them and they didn't seem like they came out right. So I ended up putting half of the ones boiled and the half ones raw. The problem I had was every time I went back to check the lasagna, the top part of the shells was extremely, extremely, extremely hard. So I removed the top layer of lasagna as far as the shells. I think it was, yeah, it was three shells on top. I removed those and tossed them out the window. Not literally out the window, but I tossed them out. So I got the lasagna back in the oven right now today, guys. It's been in there for maybe like 20, 25 minutes. I decided I didn't want to just eat lasagna by itself. I will be doing a mukbang in this video for you guys. But I didn't want to eat lasagna by itself. I wanted to also have me some fish. I said, Should I, do I want the lasagna and a salad or do I want lasagna and a fish? So I decided to go with the fish. So I went to Kroger's today. I got two catfish fillets. And I got this uh, fish fry seasoning that you guys seen me use in a lot of my videos before. So I'm actually gonna cut these fillets down because I don't like eating my fish when it's real thick. When it's too thick, I don't like eating it like that. I like to just cut it down and make it as thin as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these fish fillets, I'm gonna just take this knife and cut them into cubes, like little steak like little fish steaks. The thin part of the fish is always the tail part. So I don't really have to cut the tail part now. This part is fine. This part is fine. This part is fine. 
I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the second one the same exact way. Cut that down. Again, the same thing. The tail is the thin part, you don't have to cut it down. Since the fish is still kind of thick, I'm gonna take each of the thick ones and just put like a splice right down the center of it. Not all the way through. I'm one of them superstitious type people. I feel like food don't be all the way done sometimes, especially when it's real thick. So I'm just gonna cut it right down the center, just a little bit, not all the way through, just enough to make sure that it cooks all the way in the center of the fish as well. Cause I'm not using my deep pan that I usually use to fry fish. I'm using a more thinner pan. So that's it guys. I've already rinsed the fish off. Again, I am using the Louisiana fish fry. I've already got it. The contents of the fish fry is already inside this bag. So I'm gonna ready to turn the stove on guys. And I'm gonna ready to get the first part of the fish started. And I'm gonna show you guys step by step how I do my fish. Again, I have a lot of new people that's recently joined the Cryer family and a lot of them don't go back and watch the old videos. By the way, thank you for the people who recently subscribed to my channel and thank you most important to the people who recently resubscribed to my channel. I've gotten a lot of messages from people said that they recently resubscribed to the channel. Um, a lot of them say that they left for various reasons. Some people said that they didn't like some of the stuff that I was doing in the videos. But a most majority of the people who resubscribed back to the channel said that they were tired of the drama. Now, even though we know that drama sells, people do pull up to watch the drama. Sometimes they don't like it when the drama continues to linger on and on and on and on and on. Because um, at that point, it becomes just a storyline. You know, we know that when the video drops from the prior family, that notification goes off, it's going to be drama. Sometimes people want to be entertained. Sometimes people just want to have fun. So we switched it up, so I appreciate all you who pulled up. But, as I was saying, a lot of people seen me cook fish before, but a lot of people who new to my channel have not seen me cook fish before. You guys know I love fish, it's one of my favorite dishes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this uh, stove on and get this grease warmed up, and we're gonna get this started, guys. Okay guys, I got that fish all laid out. Now you're probably wondering, what this orange looking stuff is on here. This is actually, I put a douse of Old Bay seasoning on the fish fillets. You usually don't have to season the fish at all when you're using the, uh, fish, the fish breading that I'm actually using for this dish. But because I like this stuff so much, I decided to go ahead and put a little bit on here. So I have the grease on already. We're gonna go ahead and test that grease real quick to make sure that it's hot and ready to put the grease in. So I have the contents of my fish seasoning in this bag. I'm just gonna take a little bit of it in my fingers and sprinkle it right in the grease to see if that grease moves. You guys see that? That means that fish grease is ready to fry some fish. I also have a set of tongs right here on the side that I'm gonna be uh, using to be able to grab my fish out and flip it over. But I have enough grease in here where I, I would only have to flip the fish one time and we know that it's 100% done. So let's go ahead and get it put in the bag and transfer it over. Okay, so all I basically did was I put the fish in this bag and I shook the bag up real good to make sure that the fish is all milled up good. And I should have 10 fish steaks in here and take them, just gently put them in that grease, just like that. If you guys watch my videos, you guys know what I always say, don't never drop the fish or chicken in the grease because it will burn you. Gently just lay it right in there. I remember I used to try to put as much as I could in at one time as if it was going somewhere, but don't try to overstack the meat inside of that grease because all you're gonna do is just hurt yourself and then it makes it a lot harder to flip that stuff over. So I have, I took both of the fillets and I cut them down to sections of five. So we're gonna put five pieces in here and then we will put the other five pieces in there as those five come out right there. Again, guys, see how the fish is cooking real slow. You don't have to cook it really fast. And hopefully by the time that the fish gets done because the lasagna was actually done last night, but I had to, I had an emergency I had to go handle guys. And by the grace of God, I was out pretty late. Um, didn't make it home until a lot earlier, so. Um, but everything was okay for the most part, put it that way. And we have the lasagna. We're gonna check on that lasagna real quick. We have lasagna right here. We're gonna go ahead and take that lid off of it and let it do its brownness on top. 
That way everything will come out together. So when the fish is done, when the two batches of fish are done, then I can go ahead and prepare the plate. Oh, this smells really, really good, y'all. Oh, it's hot too. By the way, when I took the layers off the lasagna earlier, the extra shells that I felt like that weren't cooking, I went ahead and cut the lasagna into squares because I know that they say don't cut it while it's hot because it's gonna actually fall apart and stuff. So wow, look at that guys. That lasagna is looking yummy. Ooh, I don't want the camera too close because you can feel that heat coming off there. This thing almost slid off here. So we're gonna go ahead and slide that back in there guys and let that go ahead and do its thing until the fish is done. Again, by the time the fish comes out, it's all GG's y'all. Oh, whoa, look. I made a mess right here on the floor. Lasagna is on the floor. Get up here. This happens, man, when you're cooking. Okay. Okay, back to the fish. So you guys see, I haven't turned the camera off yet. But you're not, and I did that on purpose so you guys can see how that fish is cooking. It don't take long because I cut the fish open. If you guys look really close, you can see like the little slits that I put in each piece of fish. And again, all I have to do is turn this fish over one time. And that's pretty much, you know, it's all good. The grease is not popping or anything. It's not like, you guys know how you fry foods and the grease be popping all over the place. That's not the case because I got the temperature on the grease set just right. It's not cooking too fast. It's not cooking too slow. It's actually cooking nice and evenly. And so this is actually gonna be perfect because like I said, it's all gonna come out together. When the fish is done, then the lasagna is done. So I got my lasagna right here. It looks a little bit dry. I put it separately on this plate so it would cool off because it was really hot coming out the oven. And then I have my fish right here, my little catfish steaks. And even though no one mentioned it in the previous video, yeah, I got some garlic bread, guys. Yes, I do. So before I tear into this lasagna, this would be my first time trying this, guys, and it's no cap. I didn't even try it off camera. I tasted a piece of the meat, but I did not taste any of the lasagna. So before I get into this, I'm gonna say my grace real quick. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, thank you so much for my health, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to keep my children healthy, my loved ones healthy, my family members, my friends, my enemies. Lord, I pray for everybody who has breath in their body, Lord. I pray for anybody who has blood running in their body, Lord. I pray for all life, Lord. I pray for healing, Lord. I pray that you will help me correct my wrongs in every area of my life, Lord, especially at my weakest moments. And please forgive me for all of my sins. In the name of Jesus, amen. So let's get into this lasagna. For those of you who watched part one of my video, once again, I wanna say thank you for that. It means a lot to me because you guys were able to teach me some things and give me some advice. Um, before I did the second part of this video, which it was too late to actually take you guys' as advice because I had already, let's say the damage was already done. I had already started cooking the food, but now I have a lot of stuff now that I've learned doing part one of that video. And as you guys know, this was my biggest fear. Cooking lasagna was always my biggest fear. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear into this and see what it's tasting like. Again, this is what it looks like, guys. Give it a try. Here we go, guys. Should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? I did it. I will say this. I've seen on multiple comments 
saying they had never seen it done with cottage cheese before. I'm gonna tell you guys something. Mm. I freaking did it, man. I freaking did it. I did it. I freaking did it, man. Incredible. The cheese is cheesing, guys. I've seen a lot of comments where people said they had never seen cottage cheese used on lasagna before. I'm gonna tell you why I went with the cottage cheese. I had homemade lasagna made for me years ago. A lot of years ago, guys. And I remember watching the lasagna get made. Cottage cheese was used, but a lot of people sent me some suggestions on what to use and not use the cottage cheese. So next time I make it, I think it's called ricotta. Guys, don't slam me for mispronouncing stuff. Y'all know how I am. I'm, I'm not perfect. But I think a lot of the comments said ricotta cheese. Use ricotta cheese. Matter of fact, mmm. Mmm. I was gonna read some of the comments, but I don't wanna touch my phone while I'm eating. So that's something I might use next time. But what I did realize, like I said in the earlier part of this video, is I didn't realize some of the items that I bought and used with making my lasagna was plant-based products. I had no idea. I guess I was so caught up into getting into the store, buying the products, I was more excited for you guys to see that I'm actually gonna step out there and make this particular dish right here. That I guess when I seen the cheese and stuff, I wasn't really paying attention to the title of it as far as like being vegan or plant-based, which was my fault. Um, but honestly, in all honesty, this lasagna tastes really good. If I had to rate this from a zero to 10, I would get this maybe an eight. I'm not gonna say a 10 because I know that it could be better. I'm never going to rate anything a 10 for the first time, but this is really good. I'm going to tell you something that really made me feel good. I seen a young lady's comment in my video. She said that she makes lasagna all the time, but she had never made it the way I made mine. And she said she's going to try the lasagna and she said that she's going to send me the video. I was like, well, that's pretty cool coming from somebody who makes lasagna on the regular. The only downfall that I had with this lasagna, like I said, I couldn't understand why the top part of a lasagna, as far as the shells, the lasagna noodles, why they were so hard on top. And I went on to read more comments and it said that you wanna spread the sauce evenly across all those shells because it helps soften them up as it's in the oven cooking which I did not know that, but now I know. I have a lot of lasagna left. And I might be able to break it down and use that lasagna for this evening for dinner, again, or tomorrow for lunch. I freaking did it, man. I freaking did it. I wasn't for sure how I was gonna react on camera if this didn't taste good. But I knew that I was gonna be honest with you guys and tell you guys the truth, that it didn't taste right. Now I have so many people sending me different ingredients on what to try. Now it's got me want to make another small dish just to try some of you guys' recipes. It came out really good. So guys, now that I finally got the lasagna video down, I finally got it executed, and I tasted it, and it tastes pretty good, but I would actually need the opinion of someone else to try my lasagna. So maybe I should have Damon or Bianca to try my lasagna. That way, I can get a second opinion, or maybe even Margaret to try it. And the reason why I named them is because they live right here in Texas. Comment down below on what other videos you guys think I should try. 
Cause now you can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing now. This is what happens when you find yourself single and by yourself. You are forced to learn stuff, man. I wanted some lasagna so bad, I couldn't just ask somebody to cook it for me. I mean, I don't really know a lot of people here in Texas to say, hey, can you pull up and cook some lasagna for me? So I'm loving it. You guys know what it'd be nice to do right now. What I would love to be doing right now on this Sunday while I'm sitting here eating this lasagna. Y'all don't think I'm silly for this. Y'all don't think I'm silly. <clears throat> babe, come here for a minute. Come here for a second, babe. Come here for a second, sweetheart. Come here. Sit down. <clears throat> How you doing today, babe? You wanna try this fish? Okay, let's get you down. So, babe, what do you think of my lasagna? Damien, it was so good. Mmm, it's so delicious. <clears throat> you think it was too cheesy? Too much cottage cheese on it? No, babe. Your lasagna was perfect. I loved every drop of it. So let me ask you this, babe. If I could have changed something in my lasagna, from your opinion, what do you think that I should have changed? Well, baby, first of all, you should have let me put my foot all in your lasagna. Second of all, third of all, you should have had me on top of your lasagna. That way it would have tasted so much better. So babe, let me ask you something. So since I finally made homemade lasagna for the first time, when you gonna make something for me? When you gonna cook something for me? <laughs> oh, daddy. All I know how to make is hot dogs. And the last time I made my man some hot dogs, I accidentally burnt the water. You burnt the water. There's no such thing as burning the water. What else can you cook? Well, aside to making hot dogs and burning the water, I know how to make ramen noodles. But if you hang in there with me, I can learn how to cook for you one day. Listen, you gotta go, get out. But all jokes aside, I would love to be sitting here right now, having a good conversation. I was talking to one of my cousins today. I was like, cuz, you know what? He's like, what's up, cuz? I said, you know the last time I had an argument? She was like, what you mean? I said, the last time I had an argument was last year. And she was like, what made you bring that up? I said, because I was just thinking today about some stuff. And when you're so used to things being one way, you start to get used to it and it starts to feel normal to you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna tell you why I bring that up. Because usually I don't watch a lot of YouTube and that's funny coming from somebody who is a YouTuber. I upload my videos, I go back, I comment, I favorite my uh, comments, I acknowledge the people, hey, I seen your comment, I appreciate you for pulling up. But I usually don't stay on YouTube that much. I don't search for nothing. Literally, guys, this is my right hand. I don't even stay on YouTube searching for nothing. I jump in and out. But last night, it was a late night for me. You know, guys know I had an emergency situation happen last night. So I was up kind of late. And when I got home, I couldn't really find anything on television. Besides, on Saturday nights, it's like it's dead. It's like the television is a dead zone. Netflix, Tubi, like it's just a dead zone. So I got to flipping through YouTube last night. And I was like, man. You see a lot of couples. 
that used to be couples. You see content creators that used to be booed up. I'm sitting here watching this stuff, man. You have two YouTubers, male and female. At one time, they was together. That's the thing about being YouTubers, man. A lot of people don't know how to be with each other off of YouTube. They only know how to be, be with each other on YouTube. But you take YouTube out of the equation, then you'll see what type of person that you really have. So I say that to say this. You guys used to seeing your favorite YouTubers. And now, you guys are forced to watch them same YouTubers not together anymore. You got him doing his own thing. You got her doing her own thing. But to save my life, I don't understand how another person could come on the internet and hate on one of their exes because they ex them moved on. Like, like, in real life, I would never hate on one of my exes, man. One thing about me, man, you guys never gonna see me making videos, man, hating on any of my exes, man. You never gonna see that, man. You might see me respond to one of them if they get to wrapping up at the mouth and talking crazy. I'm gonna defend myself. I ain't no punk. <laughs> Mom ain't raised no, no cowards. But one thing about me, I see one of my exes on the internet and they moved on, they got a new man, a new girlfriend, or whatever. Bro, I'ma clap for them while they winning. I'ma clap for them, I'm never gonna look down on them. You never gonna see me hating. Somebody at my door. Why somebody at my door on a Sunday? Why my doorbell didn't go off my phone? Oh, that was my other phone. I keep forgetting. If any of my exes, man, even if I got kids by them or I don't got kids by them, I'm gonna clap for them while they winning. I'm never gonna be upset because they moved on with their life, because they found happiness, because it didn't work out with me and you. Don't mean life stops, man. Life moves on for me as well. I see any of my exes online or off the line and they doing good, I'm gonna congratulate them on their success because that's what it's all about. People break up with each other because things didn't work out with us. People break up because things didn't work out with us. Don't let it go any farther than that. Don't break up with somebody or somebody break up with you and then your whole mission in life is to destroy them. Make videos about them, talk about them. And I bring this up because when I clicked on YouTube, I'm seeing like the same couples, man. And it's hurtful to see it. It is, it's hurtful to see it. You got one couple that was together. They broke up. Moving on with their life. She got a new man. He got a new girl. And they're both public with it. But then, when one situation goes wrong with one of their relationships, then that's when all hell breaks loose. That's when all hell breaks loose. So if one of them is going through problems with their significant other, they feel that it's okay to reach back out to the ex, like it's all good. And then what happens, they reach back out to the ex, and then they get back what they do, or they get back with their partner. And then they start exposing each other. And then they saving all the juicy stuff for the internet. Like, hey, I clapped her last night. Or hey, she did this last night, or he did this last night. I see so like I see so many couples doing that, man. It's like when you break up, man, call it what it is, bro. If you got kids during that breakup, just handle your business. You ain't got to have nothing to do with the woman or the dude. Y'all ain't got to call each other or talk. Y'all ain't got to even communicate. Just keep it moving, man. That's what it's about. I hate to see the situations that's going on 
And you know, I've seen it multiple times recently on the internet. I think I've seen it more, more recent now. I haven't been on YouTube a whole lot because I'm on Facebook like clockwork. Like I literally live on Facebook. Uh, that's like my thing right there. I'm always on Facebook. So basically, I spend a lot of my time, now just because I say that I'm not on YouTube like that, don't mean I'm not on the internet. I'm on the internet. I be on Facebook, man, literally like, like clockwork. But I see a lot of drama on Facebook. But a lot of drama that I see on Facebook is like, you can tell who's going through breakups, who's going through mad problems. You can tell who's got their income taxes. You can tell who's sitting on their income taxes for a while. You can tell who's got their money almost spent. Like Facebook tells you everything without even saying it. But YouTube is like, it's a big platform. And I just feel like when two people break up, again, like I said earlier, they're used to being together for YouTube, but they don't know what it's like to be together off of YouTube. As far as like, when they get off the internet, they don't know how to have a real solid relationship. Everything is just smiles and cam you know, smiles and stuff just for the cameras. It's crazy. But for the sake of me, I don't understand why when couples break up on the internet, if they move on with their lives, why can't y'all just leave each other alone? You know, that's the type of stuff I'm on. It's like, if we not together, you don't have to make video. I'm not saying that this is going on with me, guys. The situation I'm talking about, it don't even pertain to me. But I'm saying, what I am saying is that when people break up, like, just move on with your life. There's no reason to take shots at your ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend. Your, your ex-girlfriend's taking shots at your new girlfriend. Like, it's just ridiculous, man. It's like, we can do better, you know? And for a minute, I was caught up in that stuff, bro. I mean, I'm no better than the people that I'm talking about. I was caught up in it, you know? But I made a change, man. I decided to keep certain stuff off the internet. I decided to not put certain stuff online anymore. And if y'all hear about it, it won't come from Damien. I just don't put my personal life out there no more. Like, actually, I never did put my life out there on the internet. It was put out there for me. But my thing is, man, I think like when couples break up, man, especially if y'all got platforms, like whether it's a big platform or a small platform, it shouldn't be no more than, yo, we broke up a month ago. We not together anymore. That's it, that's it. It shouldn't linger on and on and on seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 months down the line. It's, you know, here it is, 2024, man. It's March of 2024. You got people doing the same exact stuff. And these people are not kids. Like they older people, not as old as me, but it's sad to see, especially when there's little ones involved. And it's like, the situation that's going on right now, there's no end. There's no ending in sight to it. Other people get to eat off of your downfall. That's all it is. Other people are gonna eat off your downfall. Even when you're not even dropping videos like that. You're not dropping a video or nothing. They're gonna still continue to make videos for months and months and months and months and months down the line. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. But anyway, y'all. Overall, that lasagna was him. It was hitting. That lasagna was hitting, man. It really was. I will be making it again, but it will not be anytime soon. Also, very important question, man. Comment down below if y'all think it'd be a good idea for me to pick somebody one day to do a cooking video with me. And if y'all were to pick somebody to do a cooking video with me on the Pryor family, who would you guys pick to do a cooking video with me on the Pryor family? It could be a male or a female. No homo.
It could be a male or a female. Just to see like a different face. If you guys had to pick, and I put a poll up, and I asked you guys, who would y'all like to see me do a cooking video with one day? Now, there is some female YouTubers that I see on YouTube, and I've watched them religiously do cooking videos. I'm not gonna say the names, but there is a few that I do watch that I would love to do a cooking video with. I do see some guys doing cooking videos, but I don't see guys doing as much cooking videos as women. But I've been thinking about doing that soon. I'm not gonna to tell you guys what made me ask you guys that question. Just know I asked that question for a specific reason. You guys drop that in the comment section down below who y'all wanna see me doing a cooking video with on the Cryer family. But anyway, the lasagna overall, it was good. Excuse me, I will be making it again one day, just not too soon. But I want to say thank you for all the ones who reached out to me, left comments in my comment section about the video and stuff like that. It really, really meant a lot to me. But before I close this video out, I'm going to do something I usually don't do. I'm going to read some of these comments back. Somebody named at Erica Lash okay, at Erica Lashannon, 1923. She said, cottage cheese, question mark. And then she said, ricotta cheese, sir, dot, dot, dot. That was one of the comments I had got. Okay, and there were seven replies up under that. Somebody named at Linda, I'm sorry, at Lindsay Price. She says, I was thinking the same thing. That's a big difference. I love ricotta cheese. Not so much cottage cheese, but just proud he actually gave it a try. Thank you for that. Somebody else um, at Donna Cam 81 says, it's good with cottage cheese too. Thank you for that because some people, I almost felt weird a little bit because some people were like, cottage cheese? Guys, I have tried it with cottage cheese on it before. I've eaten it with cottage cheese on it. Somebody named at Philly Queen Gone said, I said the same thing. I am like, I think he's confused. No, I'm not confused. No, I'm not confused. People use cottage cheese for it, guys. Like, I'm not the only one who actually used cottage cheese for my lasagna. Let's see. At Ceci Nola, 8417 said, one suggestion for your living room is to switch your plants and put the narrow plant next to your liquor cart for better balance. For your lasagna, you should have used all of the sauce in the jar because it's the sauce that cooks the noodles. Your bottom layer didn't require as much meat sauce, just needed a thin layer spread out on the bottom. Next time, you can try ricotta cheese instead of cottage cheese. Bon appetit. I enjoyed your video. Thank you for that. We're going to read one more. At Linda Turner, 4240. <laughs> Oh no, he didn't use ricotta. That would have been bomb, but it's his first time. Thank you for understanding that. See, see guys, some people get it. Some people do understand, but most importantly, almost all the comments were nothing but positive comments, positive feedback, and I loved it, man. Keep the comments rolling in. But I love you guys, man. Thank you so much for pulling up, watching part two of this video and now you guys see why i couldn't squeeze it all into one video it would have been a two hour video but i love all of you guys man drop some suggestions in the comment section on the question i asked you guys about who y'all want to see me do a cooking video with because it's going to be coming guys you guys is going to be coming and also comment down below if you have another dish that you guys want me to try that y'all know i have never tried before blessings to all of y'all man be safe and i'm gonna see y'all in the next video Peace.